I'm here. Hello, everyone. Um, great to get on a call with you guys again. Um, I'm going to keep my update fairly brief. Um, as we've been describing over the last um, few uh, weeks, uh, the team has been taking time to consolidate. Um, the team grew very quickly, especially in the last half of last year. Um, and uh, it's extremely important uh, to um, take the time to uh, work together, figure out how best to work together, how to improve processes and procedures, and also take the time to uh, make improvements and um, uh, 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 optimizations to the system. That work is undergoing, is, is going um, far better, I think, than we expected. There's been a huge improvement uh, in the um, uh, efficiency and collaboration within the team. People are getting to know each other very well. Um, communication, coordination is improving. Um, I think overall we're starting to see um, the results of this um, and um, I've also been managing to bring on some additional team members to fill in very, very important gaps and the quality of people who are um, looking to join Sovereign has been, uh, I think was always high but has been getting um, uh, it, it better uh, <laughs> if that was possible. So I think we're getting really, really high quality uh, candidates and, it, 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 and the culture um, that they bring with them in terms of their interest in Bitcoin and building on Bitcoin is fantastic. Um, so uh, over the course of the coming weeks, um, we'll be able to start putting together and taking the time to put together um, better reporting for you guys um, on how these changes have been impacting the team. Um, how this impacts our view of uh, the roadmap, and um, maybe most importantly, and you'll hear a little bit about that today, <clears throat> the um, um, work that we're doing to um, perfect and um, put additional polish onto our products, think through the roadmap, make sure the pieces are working together properly, um, and also add uh, and start putting together the work for providing polish to the DEP, uh, providing um, uh, polish around our branding and improvements around adoption and communications. All of these things are underway. And I think it's proven to be a very um, productive use of time to take uh, uh, the time after the, the massive rush of, of infrastructure we're constructing to build um, really strong organizational foundations that will stand us in good stead over time. Um, in addition to that, we're continuing to see uh, growth of the ecosystem. You guys all know that Blindex launched. There's going to be additional announcements around that. Um, and um, they're bringing FX trading to the sovereign ecosystem. Today, you'll hear about another set of projects um, that are um, launching in the sovereign ecosystem. We expect that next uh, community meeting in two weeks, we'll be able to discuss um, additional uh, project or two that are joining um, and so overall uh, across the board I think we're starting to see um, increasing momentum um, and uh, I'm very excited uh, I think you know overall I don't know how 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 um, everyone feels but my sense from everyone that I've been talking to is uh, that um, the energy is just growing and growing. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to some of our community members. So um, there's a new DAO forming around adoption and marketing. Um, um, and I'm hoping that they'll present either in a spaces or in the next community meeting or both. I'd like to call out uh, Sovereign Origin, who has been putting out really interesting analysis of zero and how it can be used uh, on Twitter. So I think we have a lot to be proud of. And with that, I hand back to Englandia. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the updates, Yago. I have a question. Um, these new potential contributor candidates, I'm curious, like, what roles are they filling? Are we going to be uh, getting introductions to them anytime soon? 
I think uh, we can leave it to either the circle leads that they've joined to or Selena to, to make the introductions. Okay, sounds good. Um, so next we have Light with Product. Are you there? Are you available to um, give out these updates? Yeah, am I coming through okay? Yep, you're great. Cool. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, good to be back. Um, so we've got, we've got a few uh, cool projects going on um, in the product side of Sovereign. Um, so we just finished up work on a restyling of the zero user interface. Um, the user interface is, is, is started off as just a fork of uh, the existing um, interface uh, for the project that Zero is based on called Liquidity. And um, one of the designers uh, in the Sovereign contributor community, Galad, has been uh, working to update that design to kind of bring it in line with um, uh, the, the, the way that uh, other Sovereign products have been designed. Um, and so that, that work is just about done. And so we've already started um, working on the actual uh, front end implementation on the development side. Um, so that project is, is moving along nicely. Um, you all probably saw the, the update uh, that went out today, um, which was a, a smart contract update um, related to staking rewards. Um, and uh, you can check the announcements uh, channel for more details on that. Um, we are testing the most recent updates that were made for the limit orders release uh, that uh, we've been talking about uh, for margin and spot limit order trading. Um, and so once that testing is complete and you know, we d we've determined that uh, the, the most obvious and, and major bugs are, are kind of ironed out, then you know, we'll be uh, transitioning it to mainnet. Um, but, but testing is still ongoing for that. Um, in preparation for the mainnet deployment. Um, and then we are also preparing for the next phase of bitocracy, uh, transferring contract governance from Exchequer to SOV stakers. Um, ex I, you, all, you all can expect to see a, some draft SIPs uh, related to uh, this uh, project uh, for community review uh, sometime towards the end of this month. Um, so this is something that you know, I've been looking forward to in particular, and I know other people in the ecosystem have been looking forward to, um, which is, you know, kind of decentralizing Sovereign even further um, and, and giving SOV stakers and, and the bitocracy, um, uh, uh, you know, dir uh, direct governance control of uh, the Sovereign protocol. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, and those are the, the, the major initiatives that we're working on. Um, but uh, Aurora uh, from the development side will, will have more uh, detailed uh, dev uh, updates about what her t uh, team is working on on the development side. And with awesome. that, I will pass it back to you. Thanks a lot, John. Uh, any questions for Light before we move on to Aurora? All right, with that, uh, Aurora, are you there? Yes, I'm here, and Light already gave half of my update, basically. <laughs> so, well, that's fine. So, yeah, since the last call, we um, deployed to main it twice. The first update was the bridge update, which allows us to lower the fees. So, um, some of you might have already realized that transferring to ETH now is cheaper than it was before. And... Just today, we launched the staking rewards update just to make sure that all the new stakers who are staking after tomorrow will still be able to receive staking rewards. Um, currently, we're working on the trading update. There, it has taken us longer than expected to get all of the different pieces to fit together. So the smart contracts with the backend relayers and the front end and then the notification service, which is sending out emails. And it's just a lot of different pieces which have to just work together flawlessly. And now we are um, almost there. So we are expecting to launch it very soon. And uh, just to remind you guys, this trading update is containing the um, trading page redesign. It will show additional information for you, such as also the liquidation history, which has until now been missing. 
it is containing limit orders and uh, like I mentioned before the notification service which is um, notifying you about liquidation events and margin calls and potentially limit orders being filled. Apart from the trading update, we are introducing limit orders or in general conditional orders, so limit orders, stop loss order, orders, take profit orders to the prep spots, so that when we launch the mainnet, these services will already be available. And this, at the same time now, simultaneously, the audit is in progress, so we are expecting to get the results early April. Um, I already mentioned that we updated the bridge recently, but the bridge is going to undergo another update with a even better gas price optimization um, through the off-chain signature exchange. So this will reduce the number of transactions which will need to be sent to the blockchain for each bridge transfer from three transactions to one. So that um, should bring quite some relief on the gas cost side. And last but not least, FastBTC is an ongoing project where we are continuously um, adding improvements, um, like um, when it comes from us from the management perspective, when it comes to risk for additional um, monitoring and different things which we want to have in order to feel comfortable start increasing the limits and also um, a reclaiming mechanism. Um, so this is just a great, very broad overview of the things, like the most important mentionable things which are currently in progress from the, um, on the protocol side. And then the front-end team is currently also um, focusing on refactoring and on creating atomic components and doing all of this preparation work, which is necessary for us to be able to um, develop faster in the future. Because, um, yeah, at some, some time you need to take the time to do a proper cleanup for you to be able to keep operating swiftly and smoothly. And, um, yep, I think that's basically it from my side. So back to you in Galandia. All right. Thanks a lot, Aurora. Any questions um, from the audience? All right, we got a quiet crowd today. Um, let's move on with uh, adoption with the GIMP. Hey guys, I'll try and keep this quick. So I know there's a couple of big updates after this to come. Um, the new intercom support system integration is coming along very nicely. Uh, the wiki team have an automated answer bot already trained and are starting to pad out the help center with content and articles and updated how to's and all of that sort of thing. So. Don't want to give away too much at this point, but it's going to be a huge improvement for user experience. Uh, so I'm super excited for it. Um, I think what we'll be doing soon, maybe in a couple of weeks, is having select user groups come and test it out uh, and give us some feedback. So stay tuned for that. Um, secondly, Sovereign Mayhem continues. Uh, this week, we've been asking people for feedback on the mobile app created by one of our community members. I think we're giving away 300 SOV for the best feedback on that one. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, if you want to stay up to date with those, uh, we usually tweet out the events, but we do have a dedicated channel, uh, announcement channel, and a discussion channel in our Discord server uh, called Mayhem Events and Mayhem Chat. Uh, also, just to stay up to date with everything generally, uh, don't forget we have our weekly Sovereign Scoop newsletter, uh, which you can sign up to on Sovereign.app. Uh, there are a few other really cool initiatives on the way, but I don't want to give out too many spoilers just yet. Uh, they should be going out in the marketing town hall, uh, which was due yesterday, but unfortunately was postponed because Malva's out with COVID. Um, we hope to announce a new date sometime next week when Malva's hopefully recovered a good deal. Uh, but yeah, please stay tuned. Uh, that's it from me, unless there are any questions. Great stuff. Any Thanks. questions from the crowd? I'm going to move on. Let's see what's next. All right. Um, so uh, regarding business development, um, there are two introductions I would like to make today. First, I would like to bring up Yeti from the EbbyDAO. Yep. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. Oh, awesome. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, it's finally nice to finally speak to everyone here. 
So, uh, in fact, we've, uh, you may have heard of a brief introduction of us from Rigandia last time. Uh, so, in fact, we've been uh, developing for quite a few months right now, three to four months, and uh, basically we wanted to, you know, since there is a lot of novel aspects to our protocol, we wanted to thrash all of that out uh, before we really come and, you know, uh, pitch a clear vision to you guys, uh, which uh, we've already managed to do. But before I dive into our product, uh, I'd like to make a few remarks on, you know, the inflationary uh, geopolitical situation in the world today. And and I mean, I'm sure as, as sovereigns, as, as Bitcoiners, many people, uh, of course, are deeply aware of this. But even so, it is so important that it, it's, it bears repeating. So uh, with that, I, I you know, I'd like to point out the, the problems of inflation beyond the, the obvious problems of, of losing, you know, purchasing power. So what are the numbers we are looking at here? Uh, Bloomberg today announced that, you know, USD inflation will be much higher than expected between 8 to 9 percent and going above 10 percent if uh, uh, if we uh, if the oil shock. The oil shock in, in Russia is really to materialize. So uh, we are looking at above 10 percent inflation for the first time since 1982 in, in over 40 years and that means a lot to the purchasing power of, of Americans and for the rest of the world by extension because a US dollar is, is the world reserve currency. But there is also a lot of elements of hidden taxation that, that happens when, you know, uh, inflation is applied unilaterally by the United States on the rest of the world. So, I mean, the United States initially was founded, you know, uh, for, with the, from the principle of no, rep, no taxation without representation. And yet today in the world, the US is taxing the rest of the world without any representation and without any say in the process. And to give a very quick, easy demonstration, you know, uh, if you consider a country that has, uh, say, a trillion dollars in U.S. Treasury bonds as forex reserves, and most countries are required uh, to keep most of their forex reserves as U.S. Treasuries, and over 80 percent of uh, countries have their sovereign forex reserves in U.S. dollars and U.S. dollar denominated treasuries. So now that country, out of say a 20 trillion monetary supply they own five percent of the total supply of us dollars as of 2020 but in the last uh, two years alone the usd supply the m2 supply has expanded by 30 percent so now you're looking at closer to 30 trillion dollars in circulation and the share of that country has just dropped from five percent to closer to three percent of the global you know of the global economy of the global reserve asset and this has happened without any consent uh, from, from that nation without any uh, you know choice on their part and in fact i i would go so far to say that this is uh, uh, pushing the poorest of the world further into poverty it is a unilateral sucking of value from the rest of the world into the united states and it is not done by a free market which i would completely support but it is done simply by abusing the position of you know reserve asset that the us government enjoys and at the end of the day, it's just distributed to U.S. corporations and even to the friends of the government. So we are having a situation where, via using the tool of inflation, the U.S. The, uh, the US government is taking hard-earned value produced all around the world and distributing it for free as printed currency to their friends. Now, this is, uh, I would say, one of the biggest, uh, you know, causes of inequality in the world and one of the biggest systemic challenges uh, that we should be looking at if we are really, you know, uh, honest about trying to fix the world's challenges when we come, uh, come approach the world as Bitcoiners. And with that background in mind, let's look at the practical solutions. Now, many people, everyone understands this problem, but the solution is not so straightforward. I mean, if you do not peg to a fiat currency, what do you peg to? What is a stable asset? Bitcoin is part of the solution, but it's not the entire solution because, uh, while in the long term it, it offers you scarcity guarantees and inflation resist, resistance, for the average Joe in the short term, it is not convenient or plausible to convert all their savings or assets into Bitcoin because they don't know when they may need to sell it or spend it. And given Bitcoin's high volatility, they could very well end up selling at a loss as, as likely as they would be selling at a profit. So Bitcoin only fixes the scarcity side of the equation. It doesn't solve the whole problem of giving people an alternative asset to hold instead of dollars that they can rely on for all the functions they rely on the dollar for minus this uh, unexpected and uh, non-democratic inflation that takes place. Uh, it, does somebody want to say something? What is that? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'll get into it, but it, I I think the community would, would love to know just how you got started, like yes. how you connected with Sovereign and how you started building this, how the definitely. team came together. And, yeah, yes, sure. yes, definitely. Yep. So uh, we, we uh, in fact, uh, I directly, uh, in fact, we started with a hackathon with that Sovereign organized. We tried to build a Bitcoin back stable coin. And uh, back then, uh, when you're looking at unpegged stable coins or inflation resistant stable coins, the only team that had ever attempted that was the team at Rai, Reflexa Finance. So we set out on this mission to start out with it. Uh, we, we started out with the nearest competitor that we had, which is Rai, and we tried to build a Bitcoin backed Rai uh, coin for the hackathon. Uh, however, having been working on that for a while, we've realized that Rai, while in theory, uh, their arguments are for being unpegged to fiat in practice. Over the last year, the Rai has behaved exactly like a pegged coin. It has stuck to the $3 value regardless of what's going on with US dollar inflation. So Rai turned out not to be the solution we were all expecting, but it just opened the door for people to talk about this concept of unpegged stable coins, of stability independent of the dollar. And, and that's where we came in. We figured that we could build an algorithmic pegged of a Bitcoin backed stable coin and we could make it crypto native and independent of fiat. So uh, on that note, I think I'll dive into our project and I'll share a screen so that you can see some graphs which will better explain this concept. Hold on a second. So, sorry? Just, just to keep, uh time consciousness I, I i got you know five I'll, 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 you. sure sure yeah that's that's good uh, can... okay can you see this you see a graph on your screen uh can oh, you see my not, screen not no? quite yet there should be a a button for screen sharing yeah Okay, I just pressed screen share. Yep. Any different? I do press it, but nothing happens. Wait, another guy named Jonty Pont Ponty screen okay, share. So try one more time because someone else was screen sharing. I'll okay, sure. Uh, share. Uh -uh, not working. I can drop an image on a channel and we can discuss it on that otherwise, no problem. Wait, so, so are you uh, able to screen share? Yeah, sorry, no problem. I don't want to take up too much time either. Uh, we'll, what sh I'll post it on general, just a white paper okay. and anyone can scroll through it and look at the diagrams. So uh, you should have received that. So I'll continue and, and you guys can look at the diagrams on that, but basically just open to uh, page three or four. You look at a diagram and you look at the exponential price of Bitcoin over the last 10 years. That's what we are basically looking at. And uh, when you look at that, and now you imagine what uh, the price graph of a stable coin backed by Bitcoin would look like. It would look like a straight horizontal line. So you can imagine that something pegged at 110 or any fixed value in dollars would be so inefficient in terms of utilizing its collateral. So while it may start at a collateral ratio of 150%, as Bitcoin grows over five or 10 years, it will be reduced to collateral ratio of 10,000%. So the underlying collateral for each $1 coin may turn out to be worth $10,000 or $15,000 because Bitcoin is an appreciating asset, whereas uh, a that pegged stable coin just stays, is, is like a horizontal line. So clearly that is not the optimal. You could clearly appreciate an asset uh, in value to some extent and still have it be collateral sufficient, still have the Bitcoin backing it be sufficient to allow for redemption at a higher rate than $1. However, that, that's where we need to f work out a mathematical relation because if you just draw a straight line diagonally, you see and this I would have shown you if uh, I had a screen share, but what you see is if you draw a straight line, say from the starting point, starting price of Bitcoin to the current price, that line will intersect the price of Bitcoin many times. And wherever that line goes over the Bitcoin price, that we would say that the token would become under collateralized and therefore would not be able to maintain the peg. So the challenge here was to find an algorithmic measure of, 
of the appreciation of bitcoin without without any uh, without any risk of that uh, appreciation exceeding the bitcoin price itself and causing the uh, the stable coin to become under collateralized and meeting these requ requirements we found that the simple moving average measured over the past 4 years serves as a very accurate measure of of the floor of bitcoin prices while appreciating with the long term trends of bitcoin price so if you uh, if you guys have looked at that diagram the green line represents the sma4 and while it appreciates with bitcoin it never really crosses over and exceeds the bitcoin price at any point throughout the history of bitcoin and so uh, that led us to realizing that the most efficient utilization of bitcoin as a collateral to build a stable coin would be by pegging the stable coin to the simple moving average of the bitcoin usd price so this takes advantage of the stability of a us dollar where as well as the long term price appreciation of bitcoin and and that's essentially a project that's a our product it's it's a uh, smart contracts are ready and uh, we are pretty close to launch so yeah i'll pass it awesome. back to you india Thanks a lot for uh, thanks a lot for the explanation, uh, Yeti. Sure, sure. Um, sure. I think maybe an AMA could could be in order because there there's a lot to dig into here. Um, yeah, that's true. So maybe true. we'll try to arrange something like that. Uh, in yeah, the future. that makes sense. Where, where can our fellow sovereigns learn more about EviDAO? I will drop our website here in the general channel, and that links to our white paper, GitHub, and anything else you might want to know. <laughs> And you can always reach out to us on Discord, and we'd be happy to answer anything. All righty, fantastic. Um, and with that, I'm going to call upon Michael Parenti uh, from Dropper. Hey, 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 everybody, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so last uh, last uh, November, uh, departed the core team to start working on Dropper, and you guys have seen some of the progress in the channel and also in the Telegram group with the AMA and stuff. And I'm really excited today to announce that we will be launching on RSK in the first half of April together with Sovereign. Um, we s spoke about uh, launching with the Sovereign DGENs as our uh, governance PFP artwork. Um, actually, that has changed. We're going into partnership with Sovereign to use the Bitcoin mutant characters from the comic book world for the governance token. So there's going to be uh, rarity and, uh, and trait stuff that's built around the Sovereign uh, universe. And I'd like to tell you guys about uh, the pre-sale details. Essentially, 1,000, so 10% of, uh, of the tokens will be made exclusively available in pre-sale to sovereign stakers. Um, and there will be 500 of, uh, of the GPFPs available for stakers above 2,500 um, SOV value staked for one year. And there will be 500 available to stakers of less than 2,500. The um, stakers of 2,500 or more on the platform will have a cap on five tokens per address and the uh, addresses that are below 2,500 will have a cap on one PFP for address. Um, so after the pre-sale, we actually have lined up seed, fund and seed funding, which will be coming in after the uh, pre-sale round SOV stakers, uh, which means that Solomon stakers are getting the first terms and the first tokens and VC is getting the second group of tokens. Approximately uh, five to six weeks uh, after the pre-sale, the um, platform will be going live, not only uh, on its own URL, but there will be an implementation living on Sovereign, uh, which will be able to, which will host the whole Sovereign NFT infrastructure for the marketing and adoption team to be doing the promotions that they're looking to be doing over the course of the next quarter. And I guess I'll be doing an AMA at some point, but this is the freshest information, hot off the butter press. Super exciting. Uh, do we have any, any questions from the crowd? Hey, Michael. Uh, it's David. I have a question. Um, amazing work. Always great to kind of have you in these calls. Um, so are, are you no longer launching on kind of Morales and, and AVAX, and weren't there kind of limitations on RSK? Could you maybe elaborate on that? Well, this is, this is really the greatest part about the message, and I wanted to keep it short. 
So IOV Labs and RSK have really stepped up the, the partnership together with Dropper and they basically laid the, uh, the framework for us to be coordinate, to be co collaborating with uh, the graph protocol. As you guys know, Sovereign's been working on integrating the graph for, 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 uh, for the platform and RSK is providing a grant for us to be doing uh, an open source, uh, you know, ecosystem version of the graph for everybody that will be made available. And the reason for that is, is that the graph has no resources because they're inter integrating with, uh, with Solana at the moment. So, RS so IOB is stepping up to really fast track that, that this happens. Um, so the Morales uh, middleware solution was something that we were doing to get out the MVP solution and that works. But of course, you know, the graph is much more feature rich. Uh, um, you know, integration than Morales has. So um, we're going to be, this was the reason that we had been developing the MVP on Avalanche and using Morales, but actually the goal was to be able to use the graph. And since now that's been solved over the course of the last, since the hackathon, now we're actually in the driver's seat to be able to launch first on RSK. And then the plan is to launch on Avalanche um, uh, in, in quarter two, so around June, which would have the Materium integration for the real world asset passports, the stuff that I've been talking about for the last half year. Um, and that's much more low cost over there. And what it is that we're looking at is one of the key things that we wrote into the protocol for Dropper is that you can burn on one chain and mint on another, along with a whole rash of really great features. So what we're building is a chain agnostic protocol so that um, so that you can bridge without, without uh, you can move the chains without bridging and wrap. You can bridge the chains without wrapping the tokens, right? So the, the intent there is that if you're looking at, at a high value asset like real estate or a supercar or gold bars, you want that NFT to be living on the most secure chain uh, there is, which is Bitcoin. And um, then all of the Materium Asset Passport stuff. So there might be 7, 12, or 15 individual NFTs that are connected with Passport that has to do with warranties, claims, and arbitration. All of that would be living on, on Avalanche uh, on the carbon neutral chain, right? So that's essentially the roadmap that is there. Um, and after we launch on Avalanche, then the plan is to be launching on BSC, Matic, Near, Polygon, and each one of the chains would have their own governance uh, and revenue sharing on, on those chains. And what's so special about launching here at home at Sovereign on Bitcoin is that these, these governance PFPs that are being made available to the Sovereign community are essentially God tokens. They are a one-to-one -one airdrop of a free token of every chain that we launch on moving forward. So if you're purchasing one of these tokens, you're getting the governance benefits and the revenue sharing benefits on RSK. And then on Avalanche, you'll get, a, you'll get a free token on that one and the revenue sharing and the governance will be separate on Avalanche and on each of the successive chains. So this is really like the biggest, like, you know, coolest offer that can be made to, to SFB stakers to be involved at this level. Amazing. This has got me much more excited about the project. Uh, so congratulations to you guys and thanks, Ben. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun uh, four months <laughs> burning burning the oil. Awesome! Uh, thanks a lot for that. Any any final questions for for Michael? He has a couple minutes left. How did you go about planning this this whole multi chain strategy? Um. Well, so, I mean, I had a conversation with our lead Solidity dev, um, whose his name is uh, Dave Appleton, and Dave Appleton um, uh, wrote the contracts for EtherCards and also does the auction contracts for the Ethereum Foundation. And, uh, and so while we were going through it, I was saying, so, like, you know, I was looking at different wrapping protocols uh, for how it is to, to move things like rare pet bays over onto, onto uh, RSK or to move other assets uh, onto RSK to have initial content for the platform. And, um, and he said, oh man, that's bullshit. We don't have to wrap it. We can just write into the contract the, uh, the ability to just burn the token and then mint it on the new chain. It was like really just a, a, a simple thing. Yeah, so actually the vision of Dropper has evolved from what it is that I originally just wanted to provide an NFT platform for the, for the sovereign community. You know, so things have moved forward and people got involved that, showed the, uh, the, uh, the vision of the tech. Um, 
One of the other interesting um, benefits of the of the of the dropper uh, PFP is that the fee sharing, uh, not the fee sharing, but actually fees on the platform. So if you're a if you're a, a GPFP holder, um, the fees on the platform um, is a 1.5 percent platform fee on every transaction, and then for launching collections, it's a 15 percent fee. And OpenSea and uh, you know Foundation, Maker's Place, all of these other platforms, they're charging between 25 and 30 uh, percent for the collection launches and 2.5 percent for the platform fee. So we're moving into a lower fee territory there. But if you're a GPFP holder, the fee is 1 percent on the platform fee uh, instead of 1.5, and it's 10 percent to launch a collection uh, instead of instead of 15 percent. So. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things that developed as it is that I actually got into building the platform. I can't say it was part of the original vision. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Where can where can our fellow sovereigns learn more about Dropper? So I would guess, you know, it's just hang, hang tight, you know, that this is going to be the first place where people are going to know anything more than what it is that you know now. Um, we're on Twitter, NFT Dropper. Um, if you go to um, avax.dropper.club, you can see the MVP. There's a link in the, um, in the menu bar where it has a link to the testnet faucet. You can log in and play with the platform if you like. And at the bottom of the page is a link to our Discord server. Um, and there will be more information coming out on the collaboration with Sovereign uh, as a blog post at some point, I would say. And you guys are going to start seeing the promotions for the presale because it's only for the Sovereign community. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Um, thanks very much, Michael. Thanks I'm again, Lamar. All righty, cheers. So I'm going to finish off uh, my business development updates and get to some of the questions that were asked in general, and then we can open up the floor uh, for general AMAs to the sovereign uh, contributors. So, um, the, the Lightning Bridge project has reached its second milestone, um, having created a fork of the Blixt Lightning Wallet that enables swaps between XUSD and Lightning Bitcoin. Um, if you'd like to try out the DEX yourself, um, it's in prototype mode. Go to marduck.exchange. Uh, I'll actually just post it in the, uh, in the general. Um, but just be aware that the liquidity is very, very low, so please don't make any big trades. Uh, it's still in an experimental phase. However, we are exploring streamlining this, um, uh, this lane within our ecosystem and having the two builders who've been focusing on this uh, work with us in-house. So shout-outs to Chris and Pseudozak. I'm going to post uh, the link to the decks right now. Uh, it is very early, so don't worry about the designer branding at the moment. Um, but it is possible to swap between stablecoins and Lightning. This is not some future uh, idea. It is live and, and working. Um, and we're proud to be the first to, to have that running for you guys. Um, regarding Gitcoin bounties, we've got uh, 17K in uh, financing for these bounties. They're on Gitcoin. Um, they focus primarily on um, uh, governance front end as well as security. We've got 10 applicants so far, and um, we're in the process of now just choosing the right uh, builders for these little bounties. So really, really excited that we already have um, a good amount of talent that is interested in um, building on these bounties, and I'm posting the link in the general chat uh, for you guys to look at if you're curious or if you want to build just hit me up and uh, i'm going to move on to the questions that were referred to me by hanzitko let's see uh by john purr can you have a sovereign meetup during bitcoin miami week so i'll definitely be there from april 5th through the 10th um we did uh make a couple of appearances at side events last year uh, we're, we'll definitely make an appearance at the, the Rootstock booth this year. And um, just follow me, hit me up. And when I find out where we're going to be speaking at or making appearances, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, also, if you want to just hang and get some tacos or whatever, margaritas, just hit me up. We'd love to just meet people 
um, in, the, in the community in person. So from Leonardo Costa, any progress on the BRZ stablecoin integration? Yes, uh, the progress is slow. Uh, they're in the first phase of adapting the AMM to enable uh, swaps and spot trading um, with pairs that don't involve RBTC. Uh, so it's under review. I know it's, uh, it's, it's progressing slowly, but surely. Uh, and final question, let's see. Uh, oh, actually, that's it. Um, do we have any more questions from the crowd? We've got uh, 15 minutes left. The floor is open. Hey, I have a question. I don't know if there's any updates worth sharing on the, the fundraise round or um, where that's at. Tiago, um, would you like to speak on this? Yeah, um, the, we expect to provide updates soon, but given the fact that the conversations are, um, you know, uh, confidential until they're not, we can't provide an update at this point. All time uh, or ballpark timeline on when that would be. I mean, obviously, I know you can't nail that, but but given the way these discussions are evolving. What are we talking about? A month? We'll get an update. A quarter. I would expect. Six I would expect that within a month there'll be an update. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Yago. Uh, also, if anyone here is connected with funds that would be interested in participating in the round, feel free to um, you know let me know. Do we have any other questions from the crowd? This is your chance. You got a solid fifteen minutes to ask us anything. Hey, uh, Bob here again. Just curious on what the uh, internal team's take has been on the success of the sovereignty Twitter Spaces. I mean, I've I've enjoyed the um, the conversations and the guests you've had on. I think the content's been great. I'm just wondering, from your standpoint, has there been much of a additional reach for people to appreciate the sovereign ecosystem and what it does? I mean, it's somewhat frustrating as somebody who's so uber bullish in light of all the I'm not happy with what's happening in the world, but it certainly lends itself to why Bitcoin and Sovereign are just phenomenal tools. I just, uh, the uh, the take up of it is slow, but I guess that's normal. But I was just curious what your input was about what Sovereignty has done. I think in practical terms, it's been extremely successful uh, on a number of levels. First of all, it's increased the overall sense of awareness. It's increased the number of Twitter followers we're seeing a general trend towards growing number of participants. We've had significant participants on a number of occasions. You know, Jet Dorsey joined a couple of times. Last night we had Samson Mao, um, uh, etc. Um, uh, on more specific level, um, I think it's been an opportunity for us to get the message out to reach. Um, and a wider audience of people who are interested in the message. This allows us to do the work of um, explaining to the world and getting people to understand on a growing basis what Sovereign stands for, but also why it's important, as well as connecting with the speakers themselves, who um, many of who weren't very familiar with uh, Sovereign until they um, started having these types of conversations. And Frequently, they are people who influence many other people as well. Um, with regards to the speed of uptake, I think that um, we shouldn't be surprised. So, you know, there's never been, um, it's never been so obvious that the entire global order, and particularly the monetary order, is shifting beneath our feet. And I think Bitcoin's trading, you know, somewhere between forty-two thousand dollars and thirty-eight thousand dollars. Like, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it on the short term. And broadly speaking, I don't think we should expect to see um, things reflected on the short term. The the reactions tend to be delayed for a number of reasons. And, um, I won't get into you know what those reasons are because I don't know. I have only theories, but um, but this is something I think we're all used to. There is one very big 
an important advantage that I think Bitcoin has, and even more than Bitcoin has, the sovereign has, which is um, the importance of time in market. So I think we should expect that the uptake on sovereign will be slower, um, with a high likelihood, than the uptake on something like a Phantom or a BSC, um, because we are um, providing a very, very different um, type of solution, right? We're not providing and we're not selling get rich quick. We're selling um, stability, reliability, and we're providing this to people who already understand the importance of this, which is the vast majority of the world. And in particular is true of uh, people who are already in um, Bitcoin as, you know, their primary uh, interest. Now, the thing about that is that this is a inherently um, more conservative uh, type of user. And it is also a user that once they choose to use a system, will stick with that type of system with a far greater degree of loyalty. And so the secret sauce here, I think, is time in market. We are going to need to prove uh, ourselves over time. Just last night in the spaces, we heard once again, as we've heard many, many times, you know, I think this is really exciting. I think it's super interesting. I was very skeptical. I remain skeptical of smart contracts. And I would like to see it live and successful for quite a while before I myself would dive into it. The reason I think this is such a huge advantage is because when you're trying to build something, uh, what you want to do is you want to build a moat. You want to build a way that you are very, very difficult to compete with, right? So you don't want um, to just be forked in the way that BSC and Polygon have forked Ethereum or the way that SushiSwap forked Uniswap. Um, you want to have a strong, sustainable moat, a strong, sustainable business. Um, and for us, one of those very big moats is time in market. The longer we are around proving ourselves, every single day that goes by is like another um, day that we've proven uh, to users that it's safe to use Sovereign, um, and, and, and the more difficult it becomes that w once we... Um, you know, go beyond the type of growth we're seeing now and into far more, you know, larger numbers, which will drive more attention, that a competitor is going to be able to compete effectively against Sovereign. So um, my sense is that we're paying a higher upfront price, both in time and in resources, than other projects uh, in sort of like uh, the more degen DeFi crypto space and that that will pay dividends uh, in the medium and longer term. Okay, perfect. I think that's a, uh, I, I really appreciate and always enjoy your measured approach to things. Uh, I'm just uh, impatient, but that's probably uh, just my nature um, and love to, uh, like I say, love the, love the sovereignties. I hope you keep it up. I thought it's been great. So I appreciate you validating that. I, I, I'd like to say that I, I second where Yago's coming from. You know, Yago is, uh, Sovereign's always been a marathon with a series of sprints inside of them. And, you know, the trader mentality is, is maybe looking at things on a, you know, on a day chart, on a week chart. And it's, you know, the expectation management is, is really, really hard uh, in, in, you know, in those two opposing things, at looking things over a longer term. Um, and, and paying the price at the beginning is, I, I think, a really good uh, way of putting that. Uh, Iago, that's a really that's a really excellent point. Um, awesome. If we don't have any more questions, um, we can close this out. Going once, going twice. I think maybe we should uh, turn off the recording because we frequently get questions after the recording is turned off, uh, and then see if there's another round uh, of questions. You know, the, right. the scenes section. Gotcha. Uh, sounds good. So I will formally close this out. Uh, Mickey, feel free to unplug the, the recording. Thanks, everyone, for joining this call. This was a really fun one. Uh, thanks for being a part of this mission and carving out a trail for Bitcoin secured financial sovereignty, dismantling what people know and understand about money. So keep kicking ass.
help us spread the word and create more sovereign individuals. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Telegram, um, twitter.com slash sovereign BTC. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our DAP at sovereign.app.